Okay, welcome back. It is um, we're in the um, the Wisdom of Solomon chapter seven, and yeah, my phone cut off, so let me put it in front of me so I can make sure I refresh it. Um. Okay. So again, for all men have one entrance into life, and the like going out. So I'm guessing he's saying that all men have this entrance and the like of going out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Wherefore I prayed and understanding was given me. I called upon God and the spirit of wisdom came to me. Now, I just think that that is like something right there, right? Because we're, we're finding out that, again, um, the spirit of wisdom is a feminine energy. If we just want to put it in layman's terms. Okay. That's just is what it is. Okay, and again, I mean, even we're talking about the Ruach. Uh, okay, never mind, we're looking at something. Um, still would be, to me, a feminine energy that was there from the beginning or before time, right? Even looked at, I even look at it as like the dark, um, chaotic mass, um, even like the Milky Way, even to a certain extent from, from Genesis 1. So, so again, this, this person was born this way, but when he called on God, he, he heard wisdom. So what does that mean? You know, that, does that mean that this wisdom would be the God of these particular people that was spring from that person that sprung from that time and then from Solomon and thereafter? You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just wondering. Okay. Or, or was, you know, wisdom sent by God, you know? Um, is she in the Father and the Father in her? You know, um, in an aspect, we can look at it as like an energy, you know, field where many people are participating. But then I would think that God would have a spirit of this particular, particular wisdom that he would bestow upon people. And it may be a different person throughout generations or time. You know what I'm saying? Like it can be someone else, but... At certain times, certain measures, and certain individuals, you know. So, um, I called upon God, and a spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her before scepters and thrones, and esteemed riches nothing in comparison of her. Neither compared I unto uh, her. Um... Neither compared I unto her um, any precious stone, because all gold in respect of her is as a little sand, and silver um, shall be counted as clay before her. I loved her above health and beauty, and chose to have her instead of light, for the light that cometh from her never goeth out. Again, you know, and that's kind of like what I feel like even on my journey um, of feeling like there's always something that is just like trying to chip away, chip away, chip away. But there is a, um, and it, it may happen once in a while, but um, there's always going to be that light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, I'm always going to end up taking, trying to, or most likely taking, um, it, it might take me some time to take the the higher road, you know, and just like not be negative and not let it beat me down, you know, and still, even if it does, you know, I don't want to give off that energy to anyone else. Um, I don't know. And, and, you know, uh, moving into this world, how it feels like, you know, they want to, um, get rid of love or feeling some kind of way and, you know, I think that that's going to happen for many, but some of us were not built that way. Um, even though it may not matter at at the end, it's just still something that I think that, you know, I don't know, is a guiding light in itself, you know. For the light that cometh from her never goeth out. And again, that's another thing, like, even they'll have their prick that they want to give you, they'll have these things, but for some of us, that they can't kill that light it just it's just not going to happen they're trying to figure out how to be able to do this and it's just i don't think that they can 
some of you they can't even really touch you actually so i mean that's just how i see it all good things together came to me with her and innumerable riches in her hands and i rejoiced in them all because wisdom goeth before them and i knew not that she was the mother of them i learned diligently and do uh, communicate her uh, liberally I do not hide her riches, for she is a treasure unto men that never faileth, <clears throat> which they that use become the friend of God, being com uh, commended for the gifts that come from learning. God hath granted me to speak as I would, <clears throat> excuse me, and to conceive as it meet for the things that are given me. Because it is he that leadeth unto um, that leadeth unto wisdom and directeth the wise, for in his hand are both we and our words. Wow. Hmm. All wisdom also and knowledge. Of workmanship for he hath given me certain knowledge of the things that are namely to know how so again when it comes to that that wisdom you know um, it's like to question that wisdom if it's coming off in a certain manner it's basically you know um, questioning God which is again for me you know people are gonna do that and that's you know what I'm saying I don't I don't know how he feels about that but I'm just saying people are gonna do that so you know um, even me you know and so they stood against their enemies and were avenged of their adversaries when they were thirsty they called upon thee and the water was given them out of the flinty rock and their thirst was quenched out of the hard stone for by what things are uh, their enemies were punished by the same they in their need were benefited for instead of a fountain of perpetual running river troubled with foul blood for a manifest reproof of the commandment whereby the infants were slain. Thou gavest unto them abundance of water by a means which they hoped not for. Okay, so again, uh, in means that they hoped not for. Hmm. Declaring by that thirst, then how thou hadst punished their adversaries. For when they were tried, albeit, but in mercy, uh, chastise they knew how the ungodly were judged in wrath and tormented thirsting in another manner than the just for these thou didst admon uh, admonish and try as a father but the other as a severe king hmm. thou didst commend uh, thou didst co condemn and punish. Whether they were absent or present, they were vexed alike. For a double grief came upon them and a groaning for the remembrance of things of past. For when they heard by their own punishment, <coughs> excuse me, the other to be benefited. <coughs> Okay, let's see. Okay, for when they heard by their own punishments the other to be benefited, they had some feelings of the Lord. Okay, so, okay, somebody was in their feelings, I guess. For whom they rejected with scorn. 
when he was long before thrown out and casting forth of the infants, him in the end, they saw what came to pass, they admired. But for the foolish device of their wickedness, wherewith being uh, deceived, they worship serpents, void of reason, and vile beasts, thou didst send a multitude of unreasonable beasts upon them for vengeance, that they might know that wherewithal a man sinneth by the same shall he be punished for thy almighty hand that made the world the world of matter without form wanted not means to send among them a multitude of bears and fierce lions again these could be representing certain family lines and heredity and um, nations as well or unknown wild beast full of rage newly created breathing out either a fiery vapor or filthy sense of scattered smoke or shooting horrible sparklers out of their eyes wherefore not only the harm might uh, dispatch them at once but also a terrible sight utterly destroying them Yea, without these might they have fallen down with one blast, being persecuted of a, a vengeance, uh, and scattered abroad through the breath of thy power. But thou hast ordered all things in measure and number and weight, for thou canst show uh, thy great strength at all times when thou wilt, and who may withstand the power of thine arm. For the whole world before thee is as a little grain of balance, yea, as a drop of the morning dew that falleth down upon the earth. But thou hast mercy upon all, for thou canst do all things. <coughs> Excuse me. And winkest at the sin of men, because they should amend. For thou lovest all the things that are... Uh, and abhorrest nothing which thou hast made for never wouldest thou have made anything if thou hadst hated it and how could anything have endured if it had not been thy will or been preserved if not called by thee but thou sparest all for they are thine O Lord thou lover of souls so again, you know, it, it, this is almost kind of making me think of uh, birthing of souls. Like it really is not even having to do with your um, outer vessel. That is talking about, you know, the birthing of souls in a sense. Um, I don't know. I just think that it's kind of deep. But anyway, someone keeps calling me and I need to take the phone call. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there and I will come back um, soon. Um, you know, I just wanted to get on the point that we're talking about um, wisdom and how Solomon actually felt about wisdom. Um, and then I want to go ahead and talk about something that has to do with, um, we'll, we'll just go, we'll just see, okay?